old terms and conditions. Have you ever actually read them? For many of us, the answer is a resounding no. Here to talk about the wild things you may have agreed to online, however, is our buddy, tech expert Dave Hatter. We're not going to get into that pain with your palm thing at FC Cincinnati maybe another time. Uh, but but <laughs> term, terms and conditions. Yeah. Um, you know, David, it's one of those things where they are – long and tedious to get through uh, when you're talking about the, the terms and conditions. A lot of people don't look at them, but what kinds of things might surprise us that are in there? You know what I mean? Yeah, Bob. So terms and conditions and also typically the privacy pol policy for an app or website, usually it's going to be pages and pages of pages of legalese. Some would argue that's a dark pattern done by design so that you don't read it. Yeah. And, and often, you know, it's a great, great cure for insomnia if you do. <laughs> um, but, you know, we don't have a national privacy law in the United States like some other countries. Now, there are some states like California and, and others who've passed laws that impact this to some degree, but it kind of depends on where you live. And I think it's so important to point out, first off, these so-called privacy policies are not designed to protect you as a consumer. They're designed to protect the company. You know, they have to create one, and if they go, they violate it, and that's found out, like Twitter was fined $150 million for violating their privacy policy related to phone numbers they were collecting that they claimed they wouldn't use for advertising but did. Um, you know, so you may get some protection out of it, but more often than not, the privacy policy is really there to protect the organization. They're usually overly broad. And, you know, they want to cover every conceivable angle because I just want to remind folks when you use these so-called free apps, right, you are the product, not right. the customer. They're giving you these things for free or at very limited cost because they want to monetize your data. So in most cases, if you really read these things, now not every company operates this way, but many, if not most do, you know, you're really signing up to give them almost carte blanche to use your data any way they want, including selling it to other companies, which may or may not then adhere to those same sort of privacy restrictions. So it's a it's a big problem in my mind. If they keep things that broad, is there anything that really is a red flag or is the whole thing as, as soon as you click yes, no, ma no matter what it is? Have you, have you ever read a terms and conditions? I, I'm, I'm being serious for uh, whether it's a social yeah. media company or, or you know, some kind of app where you read and got, went, that seems OK. Or, or does a red flag go up for you no matter what? Uh, well, Bob, now, come on. You know, I'm a tinker <laughs> head guy. It always is a red flag for me because, right, again, right. You're, you're giving these companies an enormous amount of information about yourself, your behavior, everything you're doing online in many cases. And, again, when you look at companies like TikTok, you know, they are voraciously sucking up everything they can about you. Um, you know, if a company goes out of business, so two red flags. A, when they say they want to use these your data to improve their products, that usually means in any way that they can or B, you know, like mergers and acquisitions. If, if let's say you're working with a company, Fitbit's a perfect example, okay. right? I used to have a Fitbit. Fitbit makes these fitness tracker devices. Then Google comes along and buys them. I'm not a fan of Google. I don't use any Google products. Now, all of a sudden, Google has all of my data. I didn't really have a problem with Fitbit having it because I thought they were, you know, more or less responsible, not so much for Google. So there's a perfect example of, again, even if you read it and understand it and agree with it, down the road your data could be sold. And, you know, sadly, Bob, there's almost no way to totally avoid this if you want to use these sort of digital products. It's just part of the deal based on today's lack of privacy regulation in the U.S. Well, that's what I was going to say. Outside of, you know, living in a cave and making fire with sticks, <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if, if you're, if you're going to live in, you know, uh, society today, you know, you, you have to have an email address. You have to. Yeah. I, you know, I'm using that a little bit broadly. But you know what I mean? To, to, to stay connected in the world today. Sometimes you go, you, we, we're cashless in a lot of situations where you, you have to pay in some sort of digital way. How, how can you possibly do that? That under under sort of the guise that I don't want my data taken in that way. Yeah, you're right, Bob. It's it's almost impossible entirely. But what you can do is things like opt out. Um, Consumer Reports has a great app called Permission Slip. You can download this thing and it can help you try to figure out what the privacy policies are and pull your data back. You know, my advice to people is try to stick to privacy friendly apps, companies that aren't known for monetizing your data people like DuckDuckGo rather than Google for search. You know, Apple generally is much more privacy friendly, especially with their app tracking transparency framework. And it, Bob, it's partially because Apple's business model is different than Google, right? Apple sells 
hardware and software as their fundamental business model. Google primarily sells information and advertising as their fundamental business model. Mm. So you can focus on privacy-oriented companies, Proton Mail rather than Gmail, things like that, and then just try to limit the information that's out there. Because th I agree with you. There's no way to completely avoid this, but you can limit that footprint. And one of the reasons why that's important is if and when your data gets sold to another company, will they follow the same privacy practices? Will they have the same level of security? Or when a company gets breached, sensitive information about you, it's out there now. And the bad guys use this stuff to impersonate you, identity theft, that kind of thing. So the more you can control it, the better off you're going to be. I've never really thought about that way. Apple sells things. Google, you are the thing. It's exactly right, Bob. Yeah. Really right. is the case. 